Hello, my name is Shoba and welcome to my travel and social commentary channel. If you guys like what you see, then remember to subscribe. On this video, we're going to talk about the high tea experience we had at High Clear Castle. Have your drink and snacks and whatever you need to get comfortable. And let's talk about this. So what did I think of the High Clear Castle high tea experience? After the tour, which I have already done a video on, we went onto the high tea. We walked a lot and looked around forward to a good cuppa. The high tea is in an upstairs room of the stable area. When she bought the tickets for us, my friend was under the impression that it was going to be at least in one of the umpteen rooms they have in the castle itself. The castle has 50 bedrooms and over 300 rooms, so it's not lacking in space. But no, we were in a pretty nothing special room above the regular cafeteria in the stables area. The room was really cold because the waiters insisted the windows had to remain open because of the risk of germs spreading. High tea is served in sittings at set times, so there were only a couple of other tables that had people on them. It's a high tea in so many places, including Sketch in Mayfair and Fortnum and Mason in London, in St. James's. It's the same price as High Clear's high tea, 60 pounds, so we thought it would be in a similar sort of league. Let me just show you quickly. At Sketch, the room is beautiful, all done up in millennial pink, and the food is great. Freshly made. The waiter was really attentive. You have lots of choice in the teas and they are presented on a tea trolley. The sandwiches and cakes are all you can eat. After all, the individual portions, then you are presented with a giant slice of the Victoria sponge. Once again, all you can eat. We did not even make it to the Victoria sponge though. There's plenty of choice so everyone can eat what they like. The Foreigner and Mason tea was likewise in a grand setting their Diamond Jubilee Tea Salon on the top floor of the building in St. James's. The waiter presented us with a huge menu and there was an extensive selection of tea. We were given choices of both hot and cold food, yes, freshly made. My son, who has expensive tastes, chose a lobster omelet. My husband had a scotch egg, which Fortnum and Mason are credited with having created. A scotch egg is an easy picnic food and good for traveling. Basically a boiled egg out of its shell wrapped in bacon with a breadcrumb coating and then fried or baked. Both the boys were very happy with their choices. My daughter and I just had the regular high tea selection and it was great also. We were very happy. When we thought we were done, we had to get up and walk over to the cake trolley it was this giant silver monstrosity, which was too heavy for the waiters to roll around. Anyway, we had so much food, we couldn't possibly eat anymore. We felt very American leaving with a doggy bag of cake, only it was all wrapped up in very high class Fort M and Mason boxes and shopping bag. So what happened at High Clear? That room was so cold. We were so cold. We wanted the tea to warm up. There was a handful selection of standard teas, nothing special or different, and there was no menu. The kids who were with us had hot chocolate and it wasn't particularly good. And it wasn't particularly busy, but we had to keep asking for hot tea. The tea on the tables cooled down super fast because the windows were open. So who wants cool tea? Not iced tea, but lukewarm tea. Not me, I've been living in England too long. The food was okay. The sandwiches were standard flavors like prawn and salmon and turkey and cheese, I believe. The scones were nothing special. There were also little mini Victoria sponges, which were good. Some fairly ordinary mince pies, as well as some Christmas cake, which we hadn't had before. I think they just opened up some packaged food in the kitchen, put it on a plate and sent it to us. In fact, we know they did give us pre-prepared food. I mean, it could have come 
over from the main house or the town, we don't know. Because our kids wouldn't eat the prawn or salmon, we asked for the extra cheese and turkey sandwiches. And the waitress said they only got a certain amount of food delivered for the people at the event and she had to check and see if they had any extra delivered. One of our kids wasn't with us, so we did get extra sandwiches. It was too late to cancel, so we were able to get that extra set of sandwiches for the kids who were with us, saving the day. Overall though, it really was lame. We could have been better off in the cafe downstairs. We didn't eat half the plate, and they asked us if we wanted to take them home. And we said, no thanks. What annoys me, what we got for what we paid. If we had just bought the tickets, it was about $25, 25 pounds for adults, 14 pounds for kids, which is fairly standard for visiting these estates. But you add the high tea experience and it was 85 pounds for adults and 45 pounds for kids. That's an extra 60 pounds for the high tea for an adult, which is the price of the London big name tea salons but without the ambiance or the food. Is it too much to ask for a tree trolley? I mean, is it? So, High Clear Castle. Yes, cool and worth visiting. As for the high tea experience, I wouldn't bother unless they make it worth the hefty price tag. If you want a great high tea experience, try either Sketch in Mayfair or Fortnum and Mason in St. James's, both in London. If you would like to watch any of my other travel content, feel free to check out my other videos. If you guys like what you see, then remember to click like and to subscribe. That's it for now. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.